Okay guys, here is uh, how we start here. We've got the uh, butane gas burner here, which you can get at Canadian Tire or uh, any number of different places. Uh, butane canisters that go along with that are these beautiful little things here. And you need to get a bunch of those. I would make sure you have uh, at least uh, eight or ten of those in case there's a bit of a wind to use up more when the weather's not great. So what you do with that is uh, put those in and fire it up. You got a nice blue flame there. The reason you use butane is because the heat is much higher than those with natural gas and propane, and that's the reason to use that. First ingredient is going to be our olive oil right here, and uh, any kind of virgin or extra virgin olive oil will do fine. Don't need too much of it. Probably two to three tablespoons will be an adequate amount. Get that into the wok, distribute it, bottle it, and let it get up to a fairly high temperature before you add the prawns. Preferably the prawns, which I have shown you uh, before. These are uh, 31 to 40 at Costco. Those are a good size to use uh, for three to four pieces per serving. And I've got a little formula I'm going to send to you to determine how many you need based on 144 golfers. Um, it's, uh, it's fairly straightforward. So these are 31 to 40 prawns. They should be thawed, otherwise you're going to have trouble cooking them. So pick them up the day before. Um, you can leave them in a, in a box uh, to thaw partially, but I do recommend you taking a cooler with you in case it's a hot day uh, to avoid uh, any danger of over, uh, or sorry, over warming of them and any uh, potential for, uh, for spoilage. So then the next thing you do is you add your prawns in. And I would probably do about maybe 20, 20 pieces at a time, which will then get you through very serving. Pick those up with my hands, which I shouldn't have. I usually get one of these scoopers here, which you can pick up at uh, restaurants at Fives or sometimes at the Superstore. I go to the Great Canadian Wholesale, which is a division of Superstore, and you can scoop your prawns with that. I recommend you get two woks that are similar to these. I always have two on supply, so they're just a fairly inexpensive, maybe about a $20 wok that you can get at Superstore or other locales. And uh, those are fine. A couple of these um, scoops here that uh, are just see through and then we spoon to serve with. So we get this going and get these heated up so that they turn a bit pink. And obviously we want to make sure that we're thoroughly cooking everything so that we don't have any problems again with uh, making anybody sick, which would not be a good thing. Next thing to do is to get a jar, I would suggest a whole jar of this garlic, which I also get at Superstore or any one of the Asian stores. Uh, I tend to go through almost a whole one of these with a larger group of about 200 golfers. You probably go through half, and my two rules with this are there's no such thing as too much garlic or too much Zambuca. Once you have those prawns getting nicely pinked up, they don't have to be completely pink because there's going to be a fair bit of cooking going on, but at least getting partially the way there, I would take some generous dollops of garlic here. So I'm going to say that that's probably going to be about four or five tablespoons dolloped in there quite generously. Then mix around with the prawns. Kind of coating them. You want to avoid burning the garlic, so just make sure that you're adding the next ingredients before it gets too far along, but of course a little bit of fragrancy off the, uh, the garlic is a good thing. And uh, you want the prawns to be pretty well all pink at this point in time. The next ingredient is going to be your coarsely chopped up onion. Uh, you can make it finer if you want, some people do it that way, but I like it more coarse because then uh, it's part of the, the food, part of the meal. So I usually per batch put in probably about two of these scoops full. So reasonably generous amount. You're going to need to get a couple of Tupperwares. Uh, these are sort of a mid-sized one, which for about 144 golfers is, is fine. Um, if you're going to be doing a little more than that, you probably need to get a larger one, which I'll send you a picture of as well. So get the onions in there, mix them around a bit so that they're just starting to get a bit translucent. Again, all this whole process itself, based on high heat and not too much wind or anything like that, might be a good idea for you guys to pick yourself up a Costco canopy, one of those 10 by 10 pop-ups. We can get it uh, logoed later if you want, but you might want to just have one just for some wind protection. 
The next thing is a couple of scoops of chopped red, yellow, and orange peppers. I get those at Costco in bags. Probably have them there in Kelowna as well. And um, just chop those up again, fairly coarse, so that people can pick them up with a fork or a chopstick, as may even be. And you can see everything sort of getting a little bit translucent here. Give you a little shot there. Just starting to get cooked. So if you wait until the onions are just getting lightly translucent, again, you want to keep everything fairly fresh and a little bit al dente. Usually for a bit of cooking that goes on, sometimes the batches can sit for a while. So that's okay. Probably right about like that. So you've got everything pinked up. Got a little bit of translucency happening with the uh, onions and the veggies. And ready to go. So your next key ingredients are your rooster sauce or any kind of sambal olek. Um, this is a chili garlic. You can use a chill straight chili sauce. Obviously there's plenty of garlic, but this one works fine. Got to take the top off on this one. There's got a hole on the top of this if you want, but the chilies always get stuck in there. So there's no point in using that. So just open it right up and give her a squeeze. Again, based on the response of your golfers, I put uh, you know a couple tablespoons in of that. Mix that around. That sauce has whole chilies in it, so you get a little bit of coating happening. What I've been doing more recently is using some of this sauce, which is a different rooster sauce. So these are both rooster brand. So this one's a little bit different. It's uh, it's all uh, liquid, um, sort of pasty. It tends to add a little bit of color to the dish. Makes it a little bit more sort of bright orangey. And obviously adds a little bit more heat. Once you've got that in there, just um, move it around a little bit until everything is well coated. You start to see a little bit of uh, color going through everything there. So you want that all mixed through and well coated. So you're in a pretty good shape there and you're starting to see the sauce develop. But now is the key. My other rule, which is, there is no such thing as too much Zambuca. Either in the dish or in the chef's. So what you do is you take a good generous splash of that around the outside of the wok. And as you get skilled with this, what you do is you just tilt it a little bit and it'll flambe as you just saw. And uh, just watch out you don't singe your hair or anything like that. Hopefully my smoke detector doesn't go off. I'm going to go close the uh, door to my room that has a smoke detector in. Sorry about that. And that gives us a little flambe which is always very impressive, of course, to, to do that indoors. Outdoors, you tend not to be able to see the flame. But what it does is it caramelizes the dish a little bit and creates that candied effect for the sauce, which is the to-die-for sauce. So we're getting pretty close to the end here. This one's thickening up very fast because we're doing it indoors. No wind and the heat is good. So the last little bit is whole whipping cream. And so this is getting caramelized up nicely. So I see in my other recipe there about a quarter cup. It's probably a little less than that because you don't want too much. You just want it to thicken up and get really nice and juicy, which it is, again, already doing here. We're getting that caramelization, great richness of the, of the sauce. Can you see that OK? Yeah. So that's what we're looking for is that beautiful orange color which is now going to thicken up a bit. Now what I do when I'm making it with the two woks is if I have the prawns properly thawed out, if they're not, you have to sort of use one wok to do a bit of thawing and uh, then pour off the juices somewhere where the golf course doesn't see you doing it and, uh, and then do the cooking in a separate wok. Ideally though what you'll do is if the weather is good and you've got a bit of wind protection, uh, you'll use one wok to do the fresh batches and the other one really to serve from. So you can keep doing fresh batches and just keep adding on. And eventually you'll have one wok which is actually fairly full and uh, then you'll sort of be well ahead of yourself and you can just cook a fresh batch to, to sort of top it up. I would watch when you do that. Um, if you leave the burner on too hot, you may end up with uh, burning the bottom surface. You, what you, uh, so what you want to do is turn down the heat a little bit once you've got it the way you want it. So this one is caramelizing up nicely, you can see. You want it to be creamy, you want it to be a bit thick um, because that's best for it. For it to do. So once that's like that, the only tricks are is to serve it. Now I use these little uh, plastic nacho containers, certainly little red plates that you can get at Superstore. Small plastic ones are fine.